hey guys in this video I'm going to explain about Amazon route 53 now Amazon route 53 is a DNS service provided by Amazon a DNS in general is a system that translate your domain names into IP addresses for example www.google.com it is mapped with certain IP addresses now if you ping google.com you'll get an IP address now how this domain has been resolved to this IP address this is where your DNS comes into the picture because it is not possible for someone like us to remember you know IP addresses for all these websites so that's where we keep one specific name for our website and that and that name or you can say that domain is mapped with the IP address for example Facebook YouTube Yahoo all these websites we remember easily but we cannot remember their IP addresses now in a typical DNS we have certain set of records which actually makes the DNS zone file so every DNS system has a zone file and each zone file contains several records for example this a record c name record your mx record so a records are basically point to your main domain to your ip address and c name records are the canonical names that represent your domain and that can be used to map your domain with any other domain as well now for example i have a domain called a1consultants.in and if i say like my subdomain which is called you can say google.a1consultants.in will map to www.google.com so that is something i can do here in the cname section i create a canonical name that will map my domain into any other domain and similarly we have other records called MX. So if you need to specify your email server, this is where we can use MX record. And most important is your NS record. NS record is called your name servers. So I have purchased a domain called a1consultants.in from GoDaddy and GoDaddy provided me with a couple of name servers. If I don't have these name servers, my website will not open these name servers are actually the domain name servers which are running and which are hosting my this particular zone file now what Amazon provides Amazon also provides similar DNS servers and it also allows that you can migrate your existing domain to AWS platform now before you actually use route 53 you need to have one domain registered with an authentic registrar like GoDaddy and there are several others Amazon does not provide you the facility to register your domain this is something that you need to get from somewhere else now once you have your domain registered you started by creating a zone file so here we call it hoster zone now on the right side here you specify the name of your domain my domain and create the zone file now once this zone file will be created for you you can see on the right side these are the name servers that's provided by Amazon now if you want to migrate your existing domain to Amazon route 53 you need to change the name servers and replace your existing name servers with these name servers now let's try to do this thing copy each name server and paste it over here
Now it will take a couple of minutes before your new name servers will be activated. Now let's try to open this zone file. And here you can see a couple of records have been already configured for us. Now let's say I want to create a new record. Here you have to specify the name of your record for example google.a1consultants.in and what type of record you want. I want a C name record and it should be mapped with google.com and this is the routing policy. We'll talk about this routing policy but for now just keep it as simple. Now simple is the default routing policy which is provided by all the domain name servers and Amazon comes up with three other routing policies that is where you can take advantage of your Amazon Route 53 as compared to your normal domain name system and here you can select to create the record set. Now this record has been mapped with google.com and I have created one C name for this. Now if you can go here you can see there is no such domain exist here but since I have migrated my domain to route 53 I'm not going to use this management console anymore because that is something can be used if my DNS server is still lies with GoDaddy but now I have migrated it from GoDaddy to Amazon Route 53 so everything I do I need to do it here now if I try to ping this domain it will not work as of now because it takes few minutes to actually propagate this domain to all the DNS servers and once propagated you'll start getting reply from this so till the time is propagating, let's try to explore some other features of Route 53. Now, now let's talk about other routing policies. Now there are three more routing policies, waiter, latency and failover. Now waiter latency means you have one record, for example dummy.a1consultants.in and you have a couple of web servers running. Now what you want to do is you want to send 70% of your request to web server 1 and 30% of your request to web server 2. So you are weighing your request which are coming from the users based on the policy that you specify here. Now let's say I create one new record set which will be called my website.a1consultants.in and I'm going to provide IP address now IP addresses of my EC2 instances. Now let's go back to your EC2 console and copy the IP addresses. Now select one server and copy its public IP address or if you have elastic IP address associated with your instance then use your elastic IP address. Now replace these dashes with dots and make it weighted. How much weight? Let's say 70. So this is the any unique ID. You can name it anything. My weight policy 1212 and create the record set. Now as you can see one record set has been created now let's try to create the second record set now start your second server and copy its IP address make sure all of your servers should be running and here you have to specify same domain name you don't have to specify any other new name and specify the IP address of your second server Now this server should receive 30% of my request, my second weight policy 1212, whatever name it is. Now as you can see 
the second record has been created but this domain name will not change both of your records should keep the same name now 70% of the requests coming for this particular domain will be served by this server and 30% of the queries coming for this domain will be served by this server so this is where it actually is the job of your route 53 to take care of these percentage of the request you don't need to you know specify or configure anything extra for this now let's try to create another record set and see what's the use of latency routing policy here now let's say you have one load balancer running in US and the other load balancer is running in Asia. But a user from Europe tries to access your website. What will happen? Where should that user go? So that is where your DNS or you can say Route 53 will come into the picture. Route 53 will decide which is the best possible path for a user who's coming from Europe and that path is going to be decided on the basis of latency. Whichever load balancer is experiencing less latency at that point of time, that user will be directed towards that particular load balancer. Now let's create a new record set and again provide the name, let's say www5 and here we are going to use load balancer this one and once you select a load balancer it automatically select its location or you can say the region it's in us west and set id is going to be my load balancer testing any id you want and create the record set similarly create another record set www5 and select a Singapore based load balancer see again the region has been selected automatically my LB testing now both of your load balancer should be serving the same set of services or you can say websites or whatever you have configured it should be identical and create the record set now user will actually open up www5.a1consultants.in and it will be routed to either this load balancer or this load balancer depends on which one is experiencing less latency. You can also use your EC2 servers instead of load balancer for this thing. Now the next routing policy is failover. Now let's say Again, I'll take an example of the load balancer. Let's say you have one load balancer is running in US and the other is running in Singapore and both are serving same content. If your one load balancer goes down, here we take example of active active and active passive method. Now one of your load balancer will act as an active endpoint and the other is going to be passive means at one point of time only one load balancer will be serving all the request and if that goes down then only your secondary load balancer will come into the picture now I'll create another domain triple w6 and I'll select the primary domain or you can say primary load balancer is going to be this and this is going to be primary set id is automatically selector you can change this thing as well evaluate target health yes and create the record set now it will actually keep on checking its health if this health goes down then what will happen this domain will be switched to the secondary load balancer now create another record set and this is the secondary load balancer and make it as secondary now we are not going to evaluate health of the secondary load balancer now this is how you can take advantage of your failover routing policy 
if one goes down the second will be there to serve the request so this is how you can migrate your existing domain to your AWS Route 53 and start configuring various parameters now you can take advantage of several routing policies provided by Route 53 which are not provided by any normal domain name system provider so hope you guys have enjoyed this video and thanks for watching.